Hi, very good afternoon. I've done many sessions uh, across the country, overseas. I've never had this energy in the room. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot. This, this beats everything that we've done so far. And I think that's what they call Young India and the energy that this brings, not just to the room, but to our country at large. Thank you very much. I think after lunch, everybody needs a wake up call. But this was perhaps our wake up call, the, the, uh, the gig that just happened and hats off to the energy in this room. So thank you very much for being a very alive audience, if I may. And uh, we've been uh, asked to speak for about 45 minutes. We're going to discuss this. The next 30 minutes, I'm going to discuss this with my panelists here, the topic. And then, of course, I'm going to open it up for questions because it's young India, it's enthusiastic and obviously wants to know what are we talking about. Our topic today is create in India, building the world's largest and fastest growing companies, the Indian way. And it is indeed my pleasure to be talking to the three gentlemen sitting both on my left and my right. Uh, so let's first talk about the moot question. Why make in India for the world? Why not create in India for India alone? It's a huge market. Uh, everybody wants to be here. And yet at one level, there is this obsession to take this out of the world, to out of India, to not just confine ourselves to India. Is that what ambition is all about? Is that what scale is all about? Or do you believe it's more pragmatic to just create here right now? Let's begin with you, Ritesh. Thanks for the question, and I can't stop dancing. It was so good. <laughs> so uh, I seem to be the most overdressed among the panelists. And I must tell you guys, it's, it was not intentional. Yeah, it turns out that I'm sick, so I'm trying to cover myself as much as I can. Uh, so, and hence, please forgive me if, I'm, uh, if I don't come across as, as energetic as I am generally. So I think uh, just for the specific point of creating an India for the world, I think there is no questions about India being a market that all of us are super excited about going out and solving for. But I think confining ourselves to India would basically mean that we are controlling innovation, which doesn't happen, right? Like innovation's fundamental premise uh, is thinking out of the box. That's the reason if you see the one Apple line that's become so famous is designed in California, made in China. I don't know, uh, made in China can be made in India, whatever. But I think I've always dreamt of designed in India, made for the world, uh, especially because then you create products whose benchmarks are global instead of local, because India is not you know, like China, where only companies made in China can execute there. India is a market where every company can come in. You see what's happening with Uber coming in into the Indian market and taking up a significant amount of market share. So it's important to create products like those, and hence the design in India made for the world. Fair point indeed. You've got a design in India to make for the world, and it's no longer just designed in California and created in China. But uh, let's ask you here, uh, you still believe it's imperative to design here in India for the world, or is there a market that suffices uh, our ambitions and why look beyond? I think uh, India is, uh, is one of the toughest market to crack. Oh. So if you were to think about uh, launching a new product or a service in US, where the infrastructure is pretty much you know, or, you know, set, you have, you know, when you talk about uh, either the basic infrastructure of electricity or you talk about payment infrastructure as well, things are a lot more advanced. But once you start to develop or India, you'll find out so many, uh, you know, basics that are not right. So earlier I used to work for Facebook in US and I used to, you know, take things for granted. This is how things are. You know, people would be able to pay. Uh, but once you come to India, you, you know about this two-factor authentication and you talk about, you know, wallets and other things. So these are Indian innovations. Wallet is such a big industry today because of the way we think as Indians. We are not comfortable giving out a credit card and give it to the, you know, uh, to the restaurant owner or the waiter to swipe it. We are always afraid. So there are a lot of nuances in the Indian market that a business has to adapt. And I think once you adapt to the Indian market, it's very easy to go out now and go to, you know, first step is to go to like-minded markets, go to Southeast Asia. And then from there, the product is so much mature because there's sort of nuances you have built in, it's easy to scale up as opposed to coming up from a product which is not designed for an Indian audience, you'll have to do a lot of, um, I would say, like work. Fair point indeed, uh, uh, and both very valid arguments, but let me come to you. I mean, it's, it's now an imperative that you design in India and you design for the world. But let me ask you this question. 
how successful will Western models be for a market like India? He made an interesting point uh, that India is a very nuanced market. I mean, look at Uber. They don't take cash anywhere, but in India they do. Uh, look at a Marks and Spencer. They got it completely wrong in the first time around. Second time they had to re revisit their pricing for India. Uh, and I can go on and on about examples. Uh, how successful can a Western model be in India, be it cab aggregators, be it services, be it e-commerce? I mean, those are the things that come to the top of my mind because of my audience right here. So, um, let me answer this in a bit, sure. uh, but let's first address your first question. I think uh, something fundamentally has changed in India in the last five years. Uh, we always had talent, always had talent, but it's in the last five years we have believed that we have the opportunity. I think that's what's changed. And I'll give you, I'll illustrate it with a story. Yesterday, I was uh, in my Bangalore office. We just launched operations of our food company in the Chef. And I had ordered some snacks. And I was having it with a startup founder who had come to meet me. And I was sitting in a co-working space called Beehive, right? right. And this p startup founder pitched me and I said, okay, time came and he had ordered Ola. So I said, okay, I'll walk you out uh, from the Beehive and he was going towards Sola. And on my right side was this T chain called Infinity, mm. uh, which is VC funded, just about come, come into play. Mm. And on top of Infinity was this oil room, right? And I, I just told him, I said, do you realize in the kind of opportunity or the word of opportunity we are experiencing around you, mm. ourselves? You were sitting with me, eating food, ordered from mobile, uh, paid from wallet, mm. uh, in a new kind of a co-working space that never existed five years back, That's right. where all startups are taking birth, walking out, looking at a new T joint, which is VC funded, on top of it is OYO room, mm. and going in an Ola cap. The world around us has changed in how much? Right? So this is the, this is the world we're living in. There is opportunity all around us. Mm. And more importantly, we've started to believe as Indian there is opportunity. Now let's come to the question of uh, what's the easy land grab? Uh, the least easy land grab that most venture investors understand is something that has already happened. And the first, in the first wave, the VCs internalized this idea that what's happened in the US will eventually happen in China and then in India. It happened somewhat, but not exactly like this. In the second sort of understanding of how the world is panning out, the current mindset of VCs and many investors is what's happened in China is likely to happen in India. I think we're going through that curve of investing, right? We started more and more in Indian. So we've still not reached a stage where people are saying what's happening in India and... Just about getting there. I think we are on the verge of are that understanding. Are we seeing early signs? I'm seeing it, yes. A company like Practo, company like Librate, company like Oyo Room, company like Paytm uh, are very good examples of what an Indian insight is. You're the man with the money, so it's important that you see it before the rest of us do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the whole example about what happened in the US will happen in China and India will follow what's happening in China, India will eventually get there. Uh, how does this whole create in India stand vis-a-vis -vis what's happening in the US, what's happening in China? Which are the lessons that we can learn from? Do we learn from a very developed, very, very evolved market like US? Do we learn from China? Uh, are, there low, are there lessons that can be learned at all, Ritesh? I think this is a great question, but to begin with, you know, instead of getting very philosophical about it, sure. I'll just, I'll, you know, a lot of guys here are entrepreneurs themselves, so they'll understand what I'm talking about in crude terms. Uh, if you have to build a dhanda, like a business, it's very important to figure out, are you solving a real problem for the last guy? Mm. Reality is India is possibly one of the biggest and the fastest growing consumerism markets. Internet penetration is, like a bunch of these macro things are changing. India is possibly the youngest market where people are in the age group of 25 to 35 who will for the first time open this mobile phone and use internet. Mm. When all of these things are happening, when you think about India's largest hotel chain, India's largest medical service provider, reality is all of these things are going to be valuable if they solve a real problem. So it doesn't matter whether you're 
you know, copying a US model or doing a unique thing. I mean, all of those things are cool things to say. But reality is if you're solving a problem, you'll be very valuable. Coming to the second thing, which is learnings. So I, I literally flew down like four hours back from Shanghai. So I, I spent most of my time nowadays in China in comparison to the US, um, especially because there is amazing amount of learning in that part of the world. What are the lessons that one learns in China? I think uh, in general, one of the things, I can, I can go on and on about it, uh, but I think the most intriguing thing for me is just as people, just as the kind of upbringing all of us have had, we're very, very similar people, right? Like all of us as young kids grew up with the notion of you have to be the best in class. That's exactly what the Chinese kids go through. A 99% won't do. Why not a 99.9? And the neighborhood auntie saying that second rank aaya tumhare beti, mera to first aaya. Exactly. So, <laughs> no, there's an amazing shame theory which follows India and China. So, uh, sorry for the deviation. But uh, as a young kid, this is, uh, you know, the difference between people executing an entrepreneur is real uh, nature. And if you see, that is the reason Rajesh was mentioning the last five years, it's changed. As a young kid, if you don't wear clothes and run out of your house, everyone says shame, shame, right? Over time, it becomes uh, silent, which means post 10th grade or you know, post your college, if you got a job at a startup, the person beside you will say, congratulations, you got into a startup, whereas the silent thing will be, Shame, shame, you did not get into TCS. So, I think... Uh, that's changed. That's changed. I think that... And, and I think the reason is people are... If you have to become an entrepreneur and solve real problems, you have to be shameless. And, you know, a lot of people in this room will agree. And I think that belongingness and that feeling of there is an opportunity out there to solve a problem has made people say that I will do every freaking thing required to solve this problem and it doesn't matter. Uh, what my learning has been, you know, Saurabh came in from Facebook, right? Like, it was very easy for him to say, why do I go to the corner cardiologist? Uh, you were showing me something which was about LVF or something. I mean, why would he go do all of those things? Yeah, but, he, but now he wants to solve this problem and he's so passionate about it that he doesn't care. So, you want to come in on that? Uh, we are looking more at China than at the US, finally. More lessons to learn from our neighbors than from a land far, far away. I think, uh, you know, as Indians, we should learn from everyone, mm. not just US or China. So the question is not about, uh, you know, from where to learn. The question is what we can learn. And I think the number one thing that I think particularly, you know, outside India people are good at is, is, is scalability. So when they think about uh, a process, they think about how we can automate it. When we think about a process, we say, okay, we'll put one person extra because the cost of adding one person extra is much lower than the cost of, you know, automating it. And I see it everywhere. I see it, you know, in Taj as well, in the hotel lobby when you will, you know, you'll have a doorman who will open the door as opposed to, and you know, a door will open automatically. Mm. So, so I think that's the notion of whether I build something which is scalable, which is repeatable. I think folks outside, they, they have the mentality to think about those fundamentals early on and I think those are the things that we now, we're in the process of particularly myself and we are scaling things up. We want to ensure that the same repeatability exists. McDonald is today McDonald not because it is the largest franchisee, you know, store owners, mm. but it's because you'll get the same burger, same taste, whether you are in Lajpat Nagar or Connaught Place, you'll get the same outcome. You agree with this and would you put your money in startups or entrepreneurs or ventures uh, that are drawing more inspiration either from within India and more unique to the Indian model or drawing inspiration from China rather than chasing what is perhaps a very successful model in the West? Like we, because the first round we spoke about was how nuanced this Indian market is. Yeah, so let me come back to this mm. after two minutes. So let's understand what's happening. In the first wave of money that came for Indian startup was all American. It was coming from US, primarily in the form of venture capital, but behind that pension money, uh, hedge fund money and all of that. We are now in a phase called look east phase. We've turned from look west to look east so much so that Ritesh now spends time in Shanghai and also the color of money is changed. So Japanese money, Masa is the biggest investor in India, Alibaba, 
and then behind these two magnetic personalities, there's tons of other money that is trying to come in and find its way into Indian market. Mm. We still don't have this idea of Indian money backing India, right? Uh, when you say Indian aside, money back in India, as well? Leave aside a little bit of signature or uh, posturing money by Ratan in some companies, the serious money has not come in from the likes of Azim Premjis or Ryan Murthy's or Ambani's or Birla's to back Indian startups, right? That hasn't as yet happened. And if you look at China now, that has happened. Most of the money that China is investing behind Chinese startup is Chinese money now. It used to be like Indian story. So that's the macro turnaround that is happening. We are seeing early signs of uh, evidence that Indian money is getting excited about in Indian startups, sure. but not really flown in, in any significant measure. Uh, small investors like me here, they are flirting with our money. So that's one. The other sort of question is, where is the biggest opportunity? I think the biggest opportunity is in the Indian consumer. Indian consumer is unique, he is very different. Uh, he has been brought up into a system where he values the money and values the, m the value that money provides him the most, I think the hardest in the world as sort of, sort of hinted at, is the most value conscious consumer. So if we crack that consumer, right, there will be models that we can take to the world. Uh, I think we're just about scratching that surface. You know, We've, we've spoken about the kind of companies that are doing well in India. At one level, Ritesh, so do you believe uh, there is too much money that's chasing consumer internet, whether it's your rooms or whether it's a company like yourself or whether it's the caps, it's consumer internet. We're not seeing so much in enterprise yet. And most people believe that for an economy to move from where we are today to a new age economy, it just doesn't have to be consumer internet. It has to be enterprise as well. Are we, uh, I mean, the interest is still not there. A, because it's not sexy, it's not cool. We're not going to talk about this in this room. But the fact is that without that backbone, do you believe consumer internet will still take off? Both of you will take turns on that. So I think there are three things, right? The first thing is talking about, you know, what Rajesh was mentioning about, you know, US to China movement. Yeah. I think, uh, while you know, I, I completely believe and agree Rajesh's view of saying Indian money is not chasing Indian companies, but if you were to think about it, reality is uh, even in China until free cash flow was being generated by Alibaba, Chinese companies were not investing in Chinese companies, right? Once free cash flow started coming, everybody started getting greedy. Uh, so that is one. So maybe India will continue to need significant support from outside to be able to create this value. And probably, in my view, India, in the next 10 years, the Indian dream is going to be alive. There is no two ways about it. I think the question is going to be in the pace of it. If it will become much faster, which is in the next three to four years, if we get support and learnings from the Chinese or probably countries who, or even US who have gone through this earlier, right? Because otherwise we'll learn from our mistakes and reach there anyway. That's so the reality. So let's make it. a candid confession here. A lot of the old age um, India Inc. captains that we interview, not just on ET now, but everywhere else in newspapers, other channels, uh, there is this skepticism. They all say, you know, bubble hai, dekho bhi kya hota hai. That's, that's always the perception. E on record, off record, uh, whether it's the policy makers, everybody kind of shies away when you talk about this India story. It's all very good to make, you know, an applause here, but everybody says, eh, you know, it could be a bubble in the making out of the 10, one may survive. Is that because they genuinely think there's a bubble in the making? Or is it also because you are going to eat up into their businesses eventually? I mean, you know, if there is an OYO room that I'm going to get at a good rate, a good lodging, why would I want to go to the five-star hotels in any place that I'm visiting? I mean, you know, are those concerns being raised on account of that? And which is perhaps I'm going to come back to the point, uh, Indian money is still not chasing the startups. Does it boil down to competition eventually? Or, are, you, or are they still being dismissive, you think? I think, uh, you know, the two things about it, I'll just uh, complete the previous point sure. as well. I think uh, specifically about uh, the view of enterprise versus consumer internet startups, 
I think while enterprise is very valuable, consumer companies are generally very front-loaded with costs. Mm. Uh, whereas enterprise companies are not. Enterprise companies make profit from day one or maybe the first quarter. Sure. Hence, a lot of money is not chasing it. But if you think about it, India has possibly one of the most successful enterprise companies, Zoho, is so sure. extremely yes. valuable. Fresh desk, extremely valuable. So it doesn't need a lot of capital. But consumer internet, the reason it's chasing it because the value creation is just infinite behind it, right? I mean, think about it. Alibaba is going to be bigger than, uh, you know, Walmart right. uh, in the yes. next quarter in terms of the transactions. Meituan, which employs 22,000 people in China, is going to be la the largest distributor for any food outlets in those countries. Again, I think, uh, sorry I'm comparing too much about China, it's probably because You've I was just flown back from years. Shanghai, we give yeah. you that liberty. <laughs> oh God, language is so tough. But anyway, <laughs> I think uh, India is very unique, like Rajesh said. Most of these things, trust me, 10 years later, in my view, will be sitting back and saying, you know, half of those things didn't work out, half of the things worked out. Right. I think, in my view, it's a little bit of both, but I think it is more dismissive than uh, more, uh, you know, people competition. And I think the reason is as under, right? Right. When OYO started, people thought of us like a real estate company. Mm. Then we grew, people thought of us like a Gurgaon hotel chain. So every six months, the nature of startups is such that we freaking can you get change branded. the whole. Yeah. Mm. What, what, what has happened behind it is in this period, mm. people have moved from the sentiment of being dismissive to now literally every company that has existed before I was born, now saying that this is the coolest model and we were doing it. Mm. But we did not do it for last five to six years, but now we want to do it because we can do it better. Sure. So, so I think uh, it is good that people are dismissive because if it was something that everybody knew, everybody understood ki aise hi hona hai, we would like, have you on the stage then. Yeah, like, you know, there's no need <laughs> for all of us. Fair point indeed. I want you to come in on the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the point that was we're talking about that, and also the fact how difficult was it for you to convince uh, your investors about this model? This was unheard of, right? So, <clears throat> I think the, the it was, it's funny actually. You know, I'll, I'll ask, I'll answer this one first sure. because there's a, there's a funny, funny anecdote and I'll come to the enterprise and consumer a bit. So when I was working at Facebook and, uh, you know, me and my other co-founder Rahul, we were sort of moonlighting on this side, trying to build some things for the doctors. So I took a sabbatical and I came to India for about three months and then I worked on the idea for, you know, full time. And I came back, went back to US, came back again and, uh, I left my job in April 2014 and uh, went to, uh, you know, uh, finally went, to, went on with Nexus. But when I was talking to investors, uh, we were like, we have been doing some things, but this is not what we wanted to do. So we were a software for doctors. So we were a software for doctors.com or you can say bookappointment.com. And uh, we said, no, this is not what we want to do. Mm. Nobody wants that. That's not the real healthcare problem India is facing. India is facing a doctor crunch. India is facing a problem of availability. Right. People are busy in metros, they, they ignore their health. So the, the, the better problem to solve is if I'm able to connect with a doctor, if I'm able to talk to a doctor. And my, our whole pitch was, we have been doing this, but this is not what we want to do. And we want to do something else, which we haven't built yet, but you should trust us that they we will build it. trust you in one go? Yeah, so I think the the, the, I think Nexus was, you know, took a leap of faith and they said, this is the right model to sort of, and these guys will figure it out. So I think the, you know, what Ritesh also mentioned, you have to be, uh, you know, be strongly, I would say, you know, crazy is the right word. You have to be crazy about what you think is the right way to go. And many people, in fact, I talked to like four or five investors and everybody started to sort of give me examples. So it's sort of on a market research. They started to give me examples, so this is a company which is a $10 million company or a $20 million company. Why don't you do that? Right. And they will try to sort of, you know, sidetrack you to the, but the, but the real, I think the intention behind it, would you stay on track? Right. People will say, I'll invest today if you were to do this. But then if you fall for the trap, then, then you So will. your leap of faith was taken very well into account, but I, I come back to the money bags once again. Um, the whole leapfrog that India is making from computer to uh, mobiles, Mobile. what kind of an opportunity is this opening for investors like yourselves and for entrepreneurs like them? Uh, Mind-blowing. Uh, we cannot even sort of put our hands around the size of this opportunity. This is a massive leapfrog. 
And within this leaf frog, there are many multiple smaller leaf frogs, like we moved away from direct uh, cash economy to wallet economy, for example, that's a leaf frog. Uh, so, th many small leaf frogs are happening, right? And, uh, uh, and you have to try and understand the nature of those leaf frogs and back the right entrepreneurs will crack that opportunity. Coming back to your earlier question about uh, uh, cons more money being going after consumer facing Internet. versus uh, enterprise driven uh, uh, opportunity. So I see it slightly differently. I see business models which are built around local frictions and business models which are built around global lubrication. So if we see the word like that, I think there are massive consumer facing opportunities in India, be it digital health, be it um, you know, hotel industry disruption, be it e-commerce, right. be it food, because a lot of local friction in everything. And it's not easily uh, identifiable with the Western do ways of doing business. True. Therefore, a lot of money has gone into this local friction uh, business models. Enterprise business in India yeah. is not India's specific, op specific opportunity. True. It is an opportunity for India talent to go global with. True. And so they don't have to the crack the market. So they don't say. have to crack the market. So yeah. therefore, we need a VC yeah. who is going to then back these talent or IP to go global. That really brings me to my uh, last question because I do want to open it up for the audience. Uh, I'm being told on the prompt that we've got about 18 and a half minutes left. To you both very quickly then, you cannot create in India if you only create for India. You've got to create for Bharat as well because that is where the opportunity also is. Uh, is that a challenge? So have you, have you uh, encountered the challenge? Because a model like yours will be very successful for the hinterland at large, because that is where the crunch is. But is that easy to crack? Are solutions easy to find? You know, as they say, India is not one but many countries. Precisely. And uh, uh, so what has happened with us is we, we started with the premise mm. and uh, we started developing a product. And we figured out that users are using it in a very different way. And uh, that's when you start to learn and say, you know, Indian users, as, as they say, is unique. It's not just unique. They have their, you know, their sense of jugaad. So when we first started, we had only text consultations. Mm. We said India will never do a phone call or a video call with a doctor. But then we started seeing psychologists and psychiatrists on the platform mm. scheduling Skype calls with their patients. And the patient started to say, no, no, 7 o'clock I can't do, I am at work. I'll do it at 9.30 p.m. in the night. So who would have imagined that a, you know, a platform like True. ours, True. not many people know today, but even a year back, n no one, nobody sort of knew. Mm. And even at that time, people started bringing use cases to us. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the fundamental sort of difference in which the innovation in India is sort of demanded by consumers, not by businesses. So it's a demand-led innovation and not so much supply-led. You want to come in on the Bharat versus India bit? You cannot create for India unless you think about the Bharat that lies much beyond where we are. I think uh, Oyo is as Bharat as it gets, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you start from uh, the north of uh, Srinagar, like outside the city of right. Srinagar in the north, mm -hmm. to in the east somewhere in Mizoram, to Surat and all the hinterlands of Porbandar in the west, to in the south, you know... There's really, an Oyo board everywhere. There's an Oyo board everywhere. So I have, I have heard... Uh, people. Mm. So for us, we, we've been a very Bharat company and for us the intent has been very simple. We see more business in, uh, as in by percentage, right, not by volume, True. Uh, from Shirdi and Nasik mm. than we would have ever imagined. Like religious places, sometimes I feel, I was telling our team, the amount of growth we're seeing in religious and pilgrim destinations, we should move our headquarters to like Tirupati for a month and then to Kanyakumari for a month and so on. Indians love their gods, don't they? Some 86 <laughs> yeah. crore that we need to worship. But I want to ask you a quick question before I throw it open to the audience. Do you always stay in an Oyo room? Uh, so I used to stay in an Oyo until three months back every day. Right. Uh, uh, of course, when I travel, I stay at an Oyo only. But in the last three months, my home is now an Oyo. So people come and stay <laughs> with me. Great. Uh, so chances are if you booked an Oyo, 
uh, you, you might show up at my house. Himself. What about you? All your friends, family, everybody is consulting doctors now on your platform or are they actually seeking appointments at the larger corporate hospitals? Have you been able to convince them? Have you converted so, them yet? So we are not a replacement for an in-person visit. We are an add-on. Right. Yeah. We are a place where when you want to get help, mm. you will be able to get help. And 70% of our problems are solved once we talk to a person who is knowledgeable. True. And in this, so I think, you know, talking is the first step that we have enable. Have you sought help ever, yeah. medical help yes. on your platform? Yes, I have, but you won't be able to figure out what kind of help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not intending to. Let's throw it open to the audience. Please identify yourselves. We've got 15 minutes exactly. Uh, I can see some hands being raised. Identify yourselves. I'll request you to keep your questions short and let's try and fit in as many. You can pass on the mic right there. Can we have the lights on, please? Hi, uh, this is a question to both the uh, entrepreneurs here. So in terms of, uh, I, my name is Jayantra, I'm from YI Coimbatore. Um, I, I, we build products for third party companies. So uh, the question I have is when you scale up, how do you attract talent uh, before funding? If you could elaborate on that, that'll be great. You want to take that first? There may be many job seekers here, so be careful with what you say and be flooded with CVs. So I think... Uh, I love it. Uh, you know, funding makes it easier, yes, to a certain extent to attract talent. But uh, before funding specifically, uh, it's not necessarily, so my answer is not necessarily before and after. You know, I think at, at any stage uh, of the company, the, the key to attracting talent is to attract yourself. So if you are able to convince yourself that this is the best thing that you could have done, then you should be able to convince others as well. So I think convincing and, and believing in what you are doing is, is the first step. So once you're able to do and you're able to communicate that passion to others, I think that is where you win the battle. So for example, early on when we had to sort of get folks, I didn't uh, sort of wait for them to come from Bombay to Delhi. I used to fly down myself until late I do, but then you'll have to make that extra mile. So if you already know folks, that are good for your business, who are passionate about the, the kind of things that you're doing, you have to be after them. You have to be, you know, 100% recruiting initially because you have to build, uh, you have to get like-minded folks. So I think that, you know, you have to believe in yourself and you, once you translate that. So you've got to be more of an employee seeker is what you're saying. You can't so sit and presume that you'll be flooded with CVs on day of one. Of course not. So people won't come. And I don't know if, if you know, Ritesh has a different experience, but I think, you know, how, how easy was it to recruit your first employee beyond yourself? Oh, I have, like for me, it was the toughest. <laughs> so uh, again, everyone feels the same. Right. But just to answer, uh, our country fundamentally, mm. in the past five years, something has changed. Mm. And the change has changed. If you fundamentally believe that you want to do something, right. and you're going to put everything you have on, that, on the line to make that happen, mm. the world will conspire for you to do that. Like, Why I, am I, I thinking about Shah Rukh Khan in which was that movie? <laughs> no, and, 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 and you know, at least for me, I True. feel of it very, very strongly, right? Because I never, like two years no, I back, I was staying yes. at a Barsati in Himkund colony, mm. paying six grants, and I felt very happy doing it, right? Mm. Like, so for me, it's been a massive change from moving from one room Barsati to having 63,000 rooms across every city in India. Right. I think uh, just fundamentally, uh, you know, that was first. True. I think I'll tell you about one guy. Uh, this is an amazing story. Anuj, uh, who joined me very early, young IIT BHU guy. He called, so I and Sahil, one of my interns used to work together. He called us. He found mm -hmm. us from somewhere, right? And said, I want to connect to the chairman's office. So Sahil said, Dekho, chairman to koi nahi, side mein baita, baat karna hai kya? <laughs> So I said, Theek hai, baat karao. So I spoke to him. He spoke for two hours. I said, dude, I love you. But problem is I can't <laughs> pay right? your like, money. You know, I, like uh, Sahil gets three, four grands a month and you must, you're like an IIT guy. I'll have to pay you a lot. Saurabh would know. Uh, he literally came to my office and he said, Ritesh, I'll work with you for 10 grands a month. That's what he started to mm. work with me for. Mm. And because the company went to a st status where we could not pay him even that, uh, he basically did not take even that 10 grands for nine months and he lent money. And today he runs... Uh, one of the most possibly uh, amazing things that you're going to launch out of OYO, but he's a significant millionaire in, in multiple directions. So you've so, got to be a believer if you want to create wealth. Yeah. So again, I think more than wealth, I think he's grown so much as an individual right, in the last right. three years. It's unbelievable. So he's 
uh, he's so I have a huge responsibility to finalize the women he'll get married to. So nowadays <laughs> I <laughs> that becomes part of the bargain as well. Somebody had a question here. I'm going to try and take as many. Yes, yeah. please give us a question. Um, can we have the lights on, please? The audience lights on. Can we have the audience lights on? Um, hi, uh, my name is Utkarsh. Uh, I work with Microsoft. Um, my question was about failure, and you touched upon that. In our country, failure is a huge stigma. Do you think that something can be done in school or college or even in corporates to sort of destigmatize and encourage innovation? You've got to wear failure like your badge of honor like they do in the valley. I'm just going to bunch up questions and take them. So the question, of course, about failure and institutionally what can be done. Yes, I'm going to come to you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Vaibhav. Uh, my question is uh, to Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh, the question is that uh, when do you really move from being a startup to a corporate? So that's a very important thing. It's been many years we have been hearing startup, startup, but what is that threshold when we move from a startup to a corporate? That's, that's a good one. question. And yes. second question is that as we go up, uh, you know, how, it is, how much important it is to actually make a brand out of what you are actually building? Because uh, OYO is a known startup, but when is that brand value going to attach to it so that there are much more, you know, uh, consumers which are actually uh, using your or your rooms. Thank Both you. Both valid questions. We'll address them. Yes, you can bunch in your question as well. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ritesh sir. Uh, I'm Onkar from IIT Topa. Uh, the question is to you, Ritesh sir. Uh, actually, in last December, we went to IIT Bombay, uh, Mudai, and we saw the OYO is sponsoring, OYO is title sponsor, and we were like, see, this guy started so young, and we are there mugging up fluid mechanics. So, my question is to, uh, my question to you is like, what exactly matters uh, when you start, uh, start a startup? Like uh, the innovative idea or the execution of idea? Like we are thinking of when startup, uh, what really matters? Okay, somebody has a question here. Can I get a mic right there? I'd like some ladies in the audience to ask questions, please, girls. Here, we've got a mic here right in front. We'll come to you. I'm going to be biased towards a woman now just by the virtue of being a moderator here. Yes, great. Hi, I'm Vichitra. Um, I've also signed up with OYO, so I'd like to thank you. You give me 300 room nights a month. Um, the person who convinced me to sign up with OYO was this person called Balaji. He's recently moved to Madurai. He's aggressive and he's so full of energy. He signed up with me in a 45-minute journey to the airport. How, what is it that you look for in your employees? How do you choose your employees? In fact, I would like to poach him. Sorry, but he's super good. <laughs> but what is it that you look for in your employees? Protect your turf. You them? Yes. Okay. Somebody has a question here. Hi. Uh, my name is Nirav. I'm from Bhopal. Uh, the, my question is for Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh, you are um, now an owner of fifth, more than 50, 55,000 rooms in India. And you are a big shark for the globally people are thinking too much about you. I recently read an article on Business Standard, I think on a Monday, that all the people are behind question, you. Question, sir. Yeah, so how you are planning to safeguard yourself? That's the question. Safeguard yourself, okay. Yes, you have a question here. I've got enough questions for Ritesh. I'm not taking any more for Ritesh now. If you have a question for Ritesh, okay, all of them, great. So, uh, hi, my name is Rubel. I am from Ludhiana, uh, and I have a question for the entire panel. S since we were talking about e-wallets and e-payments, how do you guys plan on ta tapping the parallel black economy of this country? And second question is to Ritesh. Uh, recently, I read an article in Thank Economic you very Times. much. I'm going to my next question here. Yes, sir. Right here. If it's for Ritesh, we can avoid. Great. Uh, it's just a question for the panel in general that we feel I'm just that safeguarding uh, you. <laughs> yes. We feel that larger corporations, I'm from Daikin, can learn a lot from startups and the innovations that they offer. Mm. Is there anything specific that larger corporations can learn? And what can startups learn from the larger corporations as well? Fair point. All right, let's take this bunch together. I'm going to come again. So we will start up with the failure. How should it be born as a badge of honor? I mean, when I was traveling in the valley, everybody told me I failed twice. My third venture was a huge success. You talk about that in India, and people tell you, kya padane bheja tha, yaar? Chala bhi nahi startup. I think uh, things have changed now. Hmm. Uh, so when I first, uh, uh, you know, so I was at IIT Khadakpur earlier, and then I left and I, you know, went to IIT Delhi. I was talking about my story earlier with Ritesh. True. So my mom went crazy, and she's like, IIT ke log aisa nahi karte. <laughs> Matlab, you know, aise you guys went to school, college together? 
No, oh, no. Okay, okay. No. Ah. So, so, and then I, you know, went to my you know, first job at ITC and then I left again. And then again, mm -hmm. you know, IT ke log aise job nahi chhodte. So, so I think now I don't get to hear that. Mm. So, once I, now I meet people, you know, this thing has been ingrained already that working, taking risk, working with a startup is not, no, is not a risk. It's fun. Great. It's, it's good. So, I think the, our society itself has changed and for the, for the better. So, and the, and the more brand ambassadors like yourselves, we will have the more that will change. From job seekers, we've got to become job creators. At my discretion, I'm going to give you the question about startups. When does the time come when the startup turns into a corporate? Never. Startup should remain a startup. Uh, and that's the, that's what founder brings to the DNA of his startup. Mm. A relentless sense of experiments. Uh, even though you would attain the scale of so-called corporate. I think that's very important in the kind of world we're living in. Mm. And that's what corporates need to learn from startups. And that's where the pain point of India is. Uh, you talked about Valley. Uh, the biggest of the companies, they are from Google to uh, Apple. They're just relentlessly acquiring startups for just talent. Right, right. And we just don't value that here as much. So that cycle needs to kick in mm. and startups, uh, as much as startups need to learn from corporates, I think corporates have more to learn from startups here. Is that what you fear, becoming a corporate one day, losing your touch with the DNA which made you start up? I think uh, definitely not, especially because we as founders are very, very clear about the vision that we want to create. Mm. But I think uh, not corporates, but I think we as startups have a lot to learn from traditional businesses mm. because traditional businesses have set a real business where consumers pay and come back over and over again. Mm. So I think we of course have a lot to learn from there. But I think culturally the way startups operate in terms of pace, execution, etc. is a thing that corporates will end up learning. But one thing that I keep telling our team is if there is one company that will go out and disrupt OYO at some point of time, it will be OYO. Which means if there, are, if there is a big risk that needs to be taken, True. we will never protect our own company. We will say if we have to bet our own company for something that's going to come in the future, you've got to disrupt. Do it. Yeah. Uh, I will come to, okay, let me just take up the safeguarding question next to you. 55,000 rooms across India, you're one of the biggest hoteliers in, in the room for sure. Uh, how do you safeguard yourself? That was your question. So By safeguard, you mean essentially remain a startup? Okay, midterm. Midterm safeguard, future. future, okay, future safeguard. So I think we don't want to safeguard ourselves. So if you read that article, you'd see three property partners, including like Ms. Uh, Suchitra, and thank you so much for your comment on Balaji, uh, have said that they, they, they love OYO because the business that comes in because of us, they get to learn and deliver a great service. And consumers have said in the same story that they've had a great experience. Until those things are happening, I, I really am not interested in safeguarding ourselves. I am interested in safeguarding myself if either of those pieces are not working. It doesn't mean everything is working today. There is still a lot of work to be done. But every day we are relentlessly working in that direction. I think, of course, as companies grow, they will uh, need to set better processes and systems yeah. for which we have been continuously bringing in possibly the smartest teams, which have been everything from running factories of ITC to possibly building engineering products for companies like SlideShare. So, so scale-up will require that you turn to companies yeah. like yourselves. Uh, I want to take a quick question on the innovation versus the execution point that was made in this room. What's more important for a startup? The ability to innovate and think ahead of anybody else about an idea or the ability to execute it to the last mile? I think, you know, to me personally, execution trumps, you know, innovation. You, know, you might be having a, you know, very wonderful, creative, innovative idea, hmm. but if you're not able to execute it, that's just an idea. So idea to, a, you know, to an extent uh, is not something which is valuable. The execution of it, it makes a lot of difference. So I think you know, the gentleman that asked at an early stage, what you should worry about is how I'm going to execute it, how I'm going to get my first hundred users. Forget about millions of what users. What worries the investors? A great idea like he said or execution like he's pointing out? Trump's innovation. Yeah, so you can have a great idea, but what is it worth if it's going to stay in the It's all about, I think, two things. It's mm. all about execution, execution, execution. Mm. 
So there is no denying that, right? The greatest of the teams are the ones that have executed and there has never been an idea that was disruptively discovered before, by him before others. Mm. The, look at Facebook, look at Airbnb. Those ideas had existed, but these guys executed better. Having said that, I receive so many pitches which are built around this notion that I will do something better than others, 10% better, 20% better, 30% better. I think we are living in a world today where uh, as an investor or isn't, even as a founder, I have to find a w way to do things 100 times better than the way they were done in, in the past. Mm. Or there was never a, ever a way of doing the same thing the same way, right? So that's where the biggest disruptive investment opportunities are being created not in ideas which are 10% better than the way the things are being done. It's got to be multifold better. My red timer there says time is up. Quick last two questions to both of you, Dan. Is it tough being the poster boy of Indian startup? Too much pressure? Let's one. start with you. <laughs> no, I think it is, it is definitely tough and I'll tell you why. I think, uh, you know, we are a very small company. We, of course, have a long way to go from where we are today, of course, as market leaders. I think as we think about it, uh, like Mayur had asked earlier, taking risks and doing things which are unthought about should be the DNA of a company. But now because of so much of, you know, uh, attention and, and uh, responsibility, right? Like, you know, if, uh, hearing Prime Minister Modi talk about us to so many amazing people, like sometimes you get scared before you take really, really big decisions. And is that the biggest um, fear in your mind? My risk-taking ability should not be dumped down. I think uh, it's not a fear because I have a lot of confidence that we'll be able to take risks. Mm. I think the only thing is it is tough for me because, uh, you know, we never expected this, right? We wanted to just solve a problem, put our head down, sit in our rooms and solve what we wanted. You weren't to. expecting to be a billionaire, but you are one. You want to come in on that? Uh, when so much attention comes in you, it kind of just makes you clamp up a little. So I think... Uh, the, when, you know, the best way to deal about, you know, either the tension or the competition or any other sort of you know, nuances is to just focus on your consumer. Mm. So if you, if your consumers are saying good things about you, I think that's, that's what you wanted to hear as opposed to, you know, what press is talking about you or, you know, for that matter, your critics are talking about you. So I think you just focus on users and, and that's what you should be listening to. But you won't mind some of those photo ops that come up in the press. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Completely out of time here. Can't be eating in the, another session. But thanks very much. And thank you, panelists, for opening up, being candid about your journey and talking about creating in India. Thanks very much for being thank a lovely you, audience, guys. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. An interesting session this was. A big round of applause, please. So, ladies and gentlemen, this was your panel. I request all of you, once this picture is done, to join in for one final picture.